accounting is hard. I did not make it hard. I have never worked on the Financial Accounting Standard Board. I've never even been invited to a meeting at the Financial Accounting Standard Board. I've never gotten a phone call or an email from a standard setter in my life. Okay? I took intermediate. It was hard for me, too. It was hard for everybody on the faculty. It's hard for you. I am not going to mislead you into thinking it's not hard and water it down and make it look all nice and soft and fluffy and we're going to have this warm experience where everything's super easy and there, you know. And then somebody else tells you the truth later. And you realize that I wasn't straight with you. But we're not going to have that. I'm going to be straight with you. I'm going to tell you it's hard. But that doesn't mean you won't be without help, without support, without resources, without encouragement, without inspiration. You're not going to be alone in the dark with this hard thing. You're going to have a coach, but it's still work. Okay. And so I'm not going to mislead you with thinking that's not okay. um, All right, your materials. Who has the book? May I wave this book around? This is going to be um, good for intermediate one, two, and three. Okay, It's heavy, and we don't want all the chiropractors in our life to enrich themselves because of the textbook. So if you want to get together with a friend, please make a friend today and make another friend next week. Now you've got two friends. Okay, everybody in here is friendly. Everybody's been pre-tested for friends. So if you want to take turns bringing the book or some other arrangement, you buy the coffee, they bring the book, whatever it is, right? So you can share a book. There's no reason that everybody, unless you're going to use it to study before after class, which is cool. But anyway, work it out so that you don't have to kill yourself with the book because it is very, very heavy. The international version is cheaper, but I don't know that the homework matches in the back. That's a gimmick that they do to try to keep them from buying the cheaper version. You can come all the way up here and the rest. Okay. Grab one of each of these piles as you go. Um, so audit the homework and make sure that it matches the US version. Okay, and then you'll know whether or not that's going to work for you or not. Okay, does anybody have the line book? Did anybody bring the line? Ah. Good. Let's do a show and tell on the line book. Ah, well done, sir. Okay, this is the line book. This is 712 pages of exam questions at the appropriate level of difficulty for you. The homework is not the right level of difficulty. Well, then why on earth am I giving it to you? Because it's a moderate level of difficulty, and you can't start out with the hard stuff, because then you look at the question, you're just stuck. That's not going to do you any good. You've got to step your way up to the level of difficulty, right? So you've got to work at the medium until you get that refined, and then you're ready to step up. So this is good for intermediate one, two, and three. We'll use five sections here, but it's good for intermediate two and three. Old versions are fine. You don't have to get the new version. It's 20 bucks compared to 200. It is a raging bargain compared to your textbook, but not cutting your textbook. This just happens to be a bargain. You can get it on Amazon. You can get an old version. Those are fine. I think the shipping is more than the cost of the version. If you're quick, because the 1 o'clock class is out there right now trying to buy it, right? So you want to be the 7 o'clock class. They're toast tonight. They're never going to get a cheap one, right? They're because you're going to go take care of the rest of the inventory. But that's the, that's the price, right? Okay, so get the glime. Most everybody ends up getting the glime. The question is whether or not you believe me, right? Or whether you have to have an experience first and then go, oh, I should have gotten the glime, and then you go ahead and get the glime. I had students last semester getting the glime before the final exam. I should have gotten the glime earlier. What can I say? You know, I did everything I did. If they got it, and did better on the final exam. Get it early. On the syllabus, you have the uh, website for the Glime. Um, and so if you want to get a new one, a used one, take care of it, whatever you can do. All right, I'll let you read the learning objectives on your own. We're going to have three exams. There's six chapters we're going to cover in this class. Two chapters for each of the three exams, and then the cumulative final will cover all the six chapters. Okay? And they're all weighted evenly, so the math is real easy to figure out your average. You just add them up and divide by the number of exams. If you happen to miss an exam, your final exam will just count double. That's not to anybody's advantage. So I know that if you miss an exam, that you didn't want to miss it. Because nobody wants their entire 40% of the grade based on a cumulative final exam. Okay, so I know that, that it's much better for you to be here. Um, you have to have missed it for an excuse purpose. So send me an email and tell me why you didn't show up for the exam. And we'll arrange for the final to count that double. Um, the project is worth the same as an exam. As you see, we'll talk about the, the project later. All right, we use plus and minus grades, uh, a plus and minus grade system. And then uh, I, I would like to mention that last semester I gave out 
every single one of these grades. There were A pluses and there were Fs and everything in between. The range was 17 to 100. One from each staff. Why is that? Why do I get that range? What's going on? Do you really believe that, that, that the ability range is that wide in this room? You got some dang old principles of County one. People were falling all over themselves, dragging, trying to get through that course. You nailed it, right? So the range of ability in this classroom is at the very top of the four time. We're not, the range of ability is not 17 to 100, so what is it? Effort. Thank you. It's persistent. You've got to be persistent. You have to have a gift for it most of you do. I would, chances are real good that all of you do, but clearly almost all of you. It's persistent. So it, it is not about whether or not I explained it clearly. It's about whether you went over enough and asked enough questions and challenged me to explain it differently and were active enough and stayed active until you reach mastery. Not that just doesn't, not, I've seen that before, mastery. We're going to talk today about what does mastery look like versus something else that's not mastery. Because we want to have a real clear glimpse of the target. I'm going to know just what that looks like because if I know what it looks like, the chances are pretty good I can get there. If I have no idea where I'm going, I don't know where I'm going to end up. But I would like to reduce the range of outcomes, right, on the bottom end of the curve. And the only way I can do that is if you get the idea sooner and don't test me and go, I don't think she means it, let's have a test and find out. Okay, here we go, here's my 17 to 100 time. Yeah, I have read that. Okay, so. Honesty. <clears throat> it is very important when you are the caretaker of the resources, and in some cases, extremely large amounts of resources, that the ethical fabric that is you be in the best possible health. So if you eat your roommate's Oreos when your roommate is not home, you are easily tempted. Now that may seem trivial because you think, what's the big deal with that? When the decisions are a big deal, I'm good for it. But unfortunately, the research on ethics doesn't bear that out. It turns out that ethical breaches start real little. And they're little tiny tears that don't matter to anybody, so who cares, right? And then next time there's a little bit bigger of a tear. And they you you actually sort of fall into it. You don't jump. It's not, yes, I'm for this decision that nobody cares about. Oh yeah. For this one, all the people care about. I'm oh, that's different. No, it turns out that that your ethical fiber is something that's like fabric. And if you if you be at it, tear at it in little places, it starts to get tired. And it doesn't get better. If you look at criminals and crooks and weirdos and, and cheats and so forth, they started out doing little stuff that nobody noticed. And then they got, it was a slow, gradual hurt. If you look, and I hope you will look at some of the horrendous crimes. Enron didn't start out with a great big thing. They started out with a little thing and they encouraged little by little. What happens is you get desensitized. You get desensitized, they think, oh, what's the big deal on that? It's five cents. And the next time it's 15 cents, what's the big deal with that? Right? So it's very important wherever you are, if you just know that's not going to do it, you could be a fabulous actuary, you could be an amazing hospitality manager, you could be um, a finance guru, you could be a hundred other things that would be amazing at it, and realize that, you know what, this is just not an area of strength. It would be better for you to acknowledge that. And if you realize, no, I, I care about my ethical fabric. I, I understand that's a critical ingredient in this particular profession, uniquely in this profession. Then you need to take care of the health of your fabric. So even when nobody notices, you have got to make the right decision because you're building up the strength of that so that when you get the bus coming right at you, um, you can you can. So when I was a controller and it was the first clothing, closing in a new company, the, the CFO came and put a sticker note, post-it note, on my calculator with a number and said, when income equals that number, you can go home. You think 
that's, I'm the only one on the planet that that's happened to? Uh-uh. Everybody I have ever talked to has had some version of that. It's a test. You have to pass the test. That test you have to pass. Now, I could give you all kinds of advice on how to divert it with humor and how to um, carefully come back down off that successfully, how not to fall into that trap. But, the, but your fabric has to be in good shape, or else you'll be saying this. You'll be saying, well, I'm only 3,000 away from that, 3,000 not even around the year, what the heck, right? Nobody cares, right? You're already starting, right? You started with the Oreos, now look where the heck you are, right? That's all the frauds that we actually have good data on. Started out with something immaterial that nobody cared about, and nobody cared about, okay? So this is real important, and, and if you um, are, have any concerns whatsoever, then, uh, Please address it. I hate that I have to say anything. I, it used to be you can come all the way up here and come down through here and pick up one of each of these three documents as you come. I can move this chair back. Um, before digital world, when I used to have to keep all the materials on reserve in the library for intermediate one, and people ripped them off. Please change majors, right? Please change majors if you're gonna. Come, you can have every book in my office just change majors, right? Because you're too easily tempted. Because you would steal my personal copy of the reserve library, right? So you would think I wouldn't have to say anything, but apparently I 